Yu-Gi-Oh! is a unique TCG, not only in gameplay mechanics, but in the fact it doesn't rotate out its card pool. Because of this, certain cards that were deemed unplayable or overlooked at first have a chance to appear depending on new strategies and the modern meta. On one hand, these cards just boost a deck's potential, but on the other, they can cheese out an easy win over the other player. But what if Yu-Gi-Oh! had a restart? Could this game be revised with the benefit of hindsight? If so, what would that game look like? These are the questions we wish to answer. I'm Dakota. And I'm Cody. Join us as we create custom packs based on the originals, but change certain rarities of cards as well as eliminating other cards to make sure their toxic behavior never sees a game map. Welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Revision Series. How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of the Revision Series. I am joined here, like always, with the Earthbound Immortal himself, Cody. Cody, how are you? Hired on today. You know, just uh, a normal given revision. Uh, lost track of time, got busy, ended up making my deck just before this episode. So, I, this we're on was, a good start. Yeah, this was a quick turnaround for us. Like, normally we do actually have, like, a week to actually prepare. This was, like, what, three days or something like that? Two days? I was not even home yesterday. I was home for maybe an hour when I was awake yesterday. Prepare to wake up because we are opening up today Judgment of the Light. As always, we will highlight a couple of the cards. The first one I wanted to talk about is a secret rare in Star Eater. This is a level 11 synchro. This card must be synchro summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card's synchro summon cannot be negated. When synchro summoned, cards and effects cannot be activated. If this card attacks, it is unaffected by other cards' effects until the end of the damage step. All right, well, going into my first pick then, I've got Star Liege Lord Galaxion, who's not inherently great in his own right. He's a level four, rank four that requires two level four photon monsters, but his effect is really what he's useful for. So once per turn, you can detach one or two materials from this card to apply the following effect. Detach one material, you can special summon a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from hand. If you detach two materials, you can special summon a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from deck. For my next pick, it is a super rare. It is Cockle Doodle Doo. It is a level five monster. If there are no monsters on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level three. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no cards, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level four. If this face up card would leave the field, banish it instead. So a lot of things with this card. Um, inherently, it's just a level five tuner. It can become a level three tuner or it can be a level four tuner. So <laughs> pretty flexible. Moving into something not quite so flexible now, I've got Mecha Phantom Beast Concoruda. It's a synchro for the Mecha Phantom Beast archetype. It requires a tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. It is level 7, so not too hard to make. A token you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. That's already very important considering that archetype revolves around having Mecha Phantom Beast tokens on the field. If this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's cards, uh, either battle or card effect, and sent to the graveyard, you contribute all tokens you control, target a level 4 or lower Mecha Phantom Beast monster in your graveyard to special summon that target. He extends, he protects, but most importantly, he a big plane. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is definitely a big plane. I'm curious with this being like a Japanese card game, if it's like, are these just almost like Transformers where they're just naturally organic metal materials? I was literally just thinking of Starscream. Yeah, or like, is there, that. or is there like actual pilots to these uh, aircrafts? I would think they're like living robotics. As for my last card, it is a rare. It is Confronting the Sea. When your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you do, this card is unaffected by monster effects that target this card. So naturally, it's a hand trap in a sort of a way, and except for the fact that it doesn't actually trap your opponent in anything, but it does give you a free level 5 if your opponent does special summon from the extra deck. It does have 2500 defense, so it does provide a little bit of a wall. And finally, my last card, keeping with the water theme, I guess, suppose I've got Shark Caesar. It's a common, which I think is our first common Xyz that I've noticed at least. But it's only at rank three, it requires three or more. Max of five though, level three monsters. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to place a shark counter on this card. And if this card attacks or is attacked, it gains a thousand attack for each shark counter on it during the damage step only. So potentially, this guy can buff itself by 5,000 every time he attacks or is attacked. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. I mean, it's going to be at least 3,000. 
So that's it for the cards that we wanted to highlight. The rest of the pack consists of the Bujins, a, I believe this is the newer archetype. I don't think we had access to Bujin cards before, but they do have an XEs. They do have a bunch of main deck monsters. They have some uh, spells and traps to help boost up the potential. After that, we do have uh, continued support with Fire Fist with new level threes and level fours, uh, depending on if you're trying to play the level four version where you're going to be playing the XEs or the level three version where they do have a rank three, but they also have uh, synchros they have a new one in here yeah we got some more mecha phantom beast monsters um, i believe now we have access to a level one tuner and a level three tuner pretty nice to actually pair it with your tokens to actually go into some synchro plays especially now that they actually do have a synchro monster we have more arch fiend cards they have a new boss monster in the main deck as well as i think it's just two monsters in the main deck uh, that are level fours we're getting the introduction to Trap Tricks, a very interesting archetype where the monsters themselves are unaffected by trap hole cards. And then we have two more archetypes that try to establish rank fours, one being the Umbral Horror cards uh, and the other one being the Star Seraph cards. So Cody, overall, your thoughts on the pack? Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, seeing more support come in for Mecha Phantom Beast is pretty much a given. I know that archetype got a lot more support as time went on. Uh, more fire support still. The introduction of some generic uh, XEs and Synchros that have the potential to do quite a bit of damage which is really nice. A new kind of boss monster for the Spellbook archetype. I didn't really expect that, but, you know, it's whatever. Interesting that there's a Arch Fiend field spell. Yeah, I guess their but... idea was just, you know, they, they finally get this for the Arch Fiends on top of, like, some actual good monsters like i've read some of these and they're pretty nice and this might be me just being uh oblivious but is this the introduction of trap tricks yeah i, I, I said that <laughs> okay cool we're here <laughs> <laughs> yeah overall i like this pack um it adds additional support for i think archetypes that needed it or maybe didn't need it but it's still nice to like have some variety in there well buddy you ready for the games i'd say so all right let's do it All right, so like I said at the top of the episode, I made this deck just this morning. Literally, like, finished it probably about 15 minutes before we started the beginning of the episode. So work with me here. It's not the best strategy. I'm bringing back something I played before, but now that it's stronger, I figured maybe we have more of a chance. We're bringing back a banish strategy, specifically because of some secrets where I pulled, but we'll get to that later. To start us off, I have two adhesive explosives uh, to be able to remove monsters. A lot of the deck focuses on removing monsters or removing cards in general to pair that up with cards like Macro Cosmos to banish those cards instead. If you've seen our Speed Duel series, it's basically the same thing as Blast Fear, it just doesn't add the burn effect. A Cyber Dragon is here for some free special summons i do plan on a second with this deck dd warrior lady to add cards to the banish dark simorg is a boss monster that i actually can go into because i have darks and winds this is while this card is face up on the field this card is also a wind attribute if this card is in your hand i can banish a dark and wind from the graveyard if, and special summon it if it's in the graveyard i can banish a dark and wind from my hand to special summon it and while it's on the field your opponent cannot set cards next up two copies of delg the dark monarch one of the worst monarchs when he's normal or special summoned i can target up to two cards in the opponent's graveyard to banish them and then send the same number of cards from the top of their deck to the graveyard uh, next up grand maju because if you're playing banish strategy you're playing grand maju mental seeker here for some tuners two copies of night assailant again just to destroy monsters plague spread of zombie because if i can get it into the graveyard before any card will be uh, banished instead i can pull it back out and i can use this uh, as fodder for the tricky which is up next three copies of him yeah cards like the tricky or cards like karma cut down below that require a discard for them to work Plague Spreader is a pretty good target for that one. After the tricky is Trust Guardian, another tuner for synchros. Uh, it can only synchro summon at level seven or higher. So any synchro monster that has this used as the tuner, uh, once the, a turn, it can be destroyed by battle. And then each time that effect is applied, that monster will lose 400 attack and defense at the end of the damage step. Dark Hole to wipe off the monsters. Dimensional Fissure is here. Just in case I'm not seeing Macro Cosmos, it's not as good as that for the strategy because it only works on monsters but it's still nice to be able to play it turn right away, not to wait. Two copies of Enemy Controller, that card's making a return to stall the game out. Heavy Storm for backer removal. 
Instant Fusion, MST, and Dust Tornado for macro removal. Karma Cut to banish any troublesome monsters. Macro Cosmos is kind of the star here. Any card that would be sent to the graveyard is banished instead while this card's on the field. Mirror Force to blow up monsters. Solemn Judgment. I did craft a second one now. That was my uh, craft after last episode. And two Solemn Warnings to go with it. Side decking, just in case those aren't enough, I do have three copies of Banisher of the Radiance, which uh, sends any card to the banished zone instead of the graveyard as well. BLS, because it, it's possible I might not get to see those banishing cards right away. So if I can load my graveyard up, it would be nice to get a powerful monster out there. Two copies of Lava. Lava Golem, Tour Guide just to go into some heavy uh, Xyz plays, Book of Moon to stall, Chaos End is a dumb card, it can only be activated if 7 or more of my cards are currently banished, but it destroys all monsters on the field. Again, this might not ever go into the deck, but I wanted an extra monster removal card and this was the only one I could, I could really pull that was fitting of the deck. Draining Shield to stop attacks, negate them and gain life points, Fiendish Chain to lock down effect monsters, and force back to negate summons. Extra deck, a lot of it's all the same you see it almost every week flame ghost guilty a thousand eyes all return now the secret is i pulled two angel of zera gains 100 attack for each of your opponent's banished cards during the standby phase of the next turn after this card is banished push and summon this banished card you can only use that once per turn so hypothetically if i had this guy in the field with say macro cosmos or dimensional fissure if dakota outs him uh through battle or card effect he's probably going to the graveyard which means he's getting banished instead which then triggers his effect on the standby the next turn. He can just revive himself. Black Rose is back, Dark Strike, Stardust, and Thought Ruler are all back. Adrius is back. Number 17, Leviathan Dragon and Terabyte are back. Shark Caesar, I went over him at the top. Tyrus and Zen Mao have all made returns. So yeah, that's the strategy. Uh, primary goal is to just banish everything and summon either like a powerful Grand Maju or get hopefully an Angel of Zera set up. Uh, alternate strategy is I do have Dark Samorg and or BLS in case those aren't working. But yeah, let's get out there and uh, let's see how we do. All right, guys, for today's episode, I'm trying out something new again, a deck I've never actually played before. We are trying out Battling Boxers. So if you are a fan of Simo's progression series, you will know that he actually plays this deck quite a bit and for good reason. To start things off, we're playing one blaster. I did actually pull one copy of this and it fits fairly well with this deck because they're all fires. So it's able to bring itself out. I can discard itself and a fire or a dragon and target a card on the field, destroy it. So he is removal as well. Three glass jaw. Uh, he has 2000 attack, which isn't that bad. Unfortunately though, for his effect, if he is attacked, he does just auto kill himself, but that does go with his effect that if he's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, I can target a battling boxer in the graveyard, add it to hand. We have three switch hitter on normal summon, target a battling boxer in your graveyard, special summon it, and then you are locked into battling boxers. Next, we have three sparer. If I control a battling boxer, I can special summon this card, but then I lose my battle phase. We have three copies of headgear on normal summon. I can send a battling boxer from deck to grave. And for the first time, this attack position card will be destroyed by battle. Each turn, it is not. Next, we have one fire dog. It's a pretty good 1900 beater but it also has the effect to special a mo fire monster with 200 or less defense from the deck so that would be the glass jaw and one goblin blur just to special summon another monster from our hand next i wanted some defense monsters so we have two snowman eater and one Raiko. we have two veilers to stop monster effects three pot of duality two rotas one heavy monster reborn snatch deal instant fusion for the traps we have three fiendish chain i'm trying out the pinpoint guard because if i do lose access to getting into my extra deck for my rank fours this is a good way to hopefully get them back on his turn and then i can do it on my next turn two solemn judgment and one warning huge revolution is back because i do plan on setting quite a few cards one compulse and one ring for the side deck we are playing three cyber dragon uh, another card i wanted to try out is dark world shackles so if he is playing a deck that likes to go first and he does establish a very troublesome monster i can use this equip it to that monster that monster would lose uh, all of its attack except for 100 and then the controller of the equipped monster would take 500 damage during each standby phase or each of my standby phases three gyoku one night beam one smashing enemy controller creature swap premature burial and two ojama trio for the extra deck the star of the show battling boxer lead yoke it takes two level four battling boxers if a battling boxer monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect i can detach a material instead of destroying that monster if a material is detached from this card this card 
gains 800 attack. So with the majority of the removal in the game being destruction either by monster effects or by spells and traps, this card can keep itself protected. Next we have Masquerade. This takes three level four monsters during either player's battle phase. When an opponent's monster effect is activated, you can detach one material from this card. Negate the activation if you do inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Once per turn, you can send the top card of your opponent's tech to the graveyard. Next we have the Kusanagi. Uh, this just negates trap cards. We have the Godiva, which negates special summons. We have the Excalibur that buffs itself by doubling its attack until the end of the opponent's next turn and one Zen Meister just because I don't really have a lot of generic rank fours. So that's the deck. Uh, it's not the most explosive rank four strategy that we have access to, but because they are battling boxers, that does give us access to the lead yoke. And lead yoke is just absolutely amazing. And I'm hoping that I can play this deck going first, establish him immediately, and uh, just tell Cody good luck. So with that out of the way, let's just get right into the game. All right, buddy, here we are. Game one, Judgment of the Light. How are you feeling about, uh, I guess, your quick turnaround? <laughs> you mean the quick turnaround that I suggested? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little less uh, optimistic about it now, but I cooked up something. I think that you should probably go into this with a bit of uh, optimism because I did end up trying to build this deck last night. Uh, however, I did do it intoxicated, so my there's decisions may be poor. But there's the thing. Uh, if I still lose, what does that say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you suck. But uh, best of luck, bud. I'm going to roll the die. And do you. Yes. Ooh. The one time I don't choose a rock. I know, right? All right, buddy. Uh, I am going to go first on this. We will go to the main phase, I guess, to start. We're going to start with a normal summon of Battling Boxer Headgeared, and I will activate the effect. So we will go through the deck. Honestly, there's not like a great target. There is a decent target that's in archetype to send, but um, it's a little too early in the game state for that. But I will just get rid of this glass jaw. But because I do have a battling boxer, I can now special summon my spar. Well, luckily for you, it's turn one, so you don't get a battle phase anyway. Exactly. Um, after that, we are going to overlay into lead yoke, and I will pass the turn on that. Battle and boxer monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect. You can detach the material from this card instead. So he can protect himself twice. Yes. And he gets stronger each time. Yes. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> he is, yeah. <laughs> Stand by the main. All good. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a special summon of Cyber Dragon. Main decking Cyber Dragon. I am. <clears throat> I like it. Then I will discard the Tricky. For the Tricky? special the Tricky. Okay, yeah. Doing the uh, rank 5 turbo again, I see. Sort of. Overlay into Tyrus. I'll go battle. Uh, let me read this for a sec quick. Uh, still in main phase, I'm going to activate Valor on your Tiras. Fuck you. Okay, yeah. I'll set, I'll normal summon, or set. Okay. I'll call it there. Uh, uh you do not um, detach because he is negated. Oh, uh, um, So that's at least a positive there for you. All right, I will draw. I can, okay. No, you're fine. Uh, we'll go standby to main. Um, I guess we'll just start with a duality. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh. It's either switch hitter or fusion. I guess both of them are pretty much turned off either way because of duality. So it, I guess it depends on what do I want for the next turn. Uh, it's probably going to be the switch hitter. So I'll add that to hand, top deck the rest and shuffle. Let's go ahead and activate snatch deal. Okay, uh, battle phase. We'll go with the uh, Tiras first. Night Assailant. Ooh. Unfortunately, it won't work. It is mandatory. And then I guess. All right, then I will detach. Um, does it matter which one? I think so. Um, we'll just detach the uh, headgear, and then he'll be at 3k. Uh, and then I'll attack. I'll go to main phase two. I will set a card. And oh, wait, wait. Uh, the battle phase effect. Um, at the end of the battle phase, I'll declare the Tyrus and pop your set. Okay. Are you going to detach material for that? Yes, and then I have to detach. Um, 
I don't think either one of these. Uh, I'll detach the uh, the tricky. Stand by domain. All good. MST on snatch deal. Okay. Well, you do gain the thousand I'm in, from. I'm in main phase. Right. right. Okay. So you can have this back. I'll go battle. Sure. Let's see what your set is, I guess. It was Snowman Eater. Okay. This is also mandatory, so I guess I will attempt, but he is protected. I guess I'll use the effect then. I believe this is also mandatory, yes. <laughs> yeah, detach, target him. There's a lot of uh, mandatory effects happening going on here. Yeah, so he's a big boy, but at least he's vulnerable now. Yes. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, uh, I will draw for turn. Uh, we'll go to the main phase, and I will normal summon the switch hitter and activate the effect. I will target the glass jaw and uh let's just uh overlay for another <laughs> another mediocre battle the swinging and 22 uh main phase two don't think i have anything going on uh i will pass stand by the main all good activate dark hole Ooh. okay this one will die and i'll detach for this one i'll detach the glass jaw that will then activate the glass jaw to add a battling boxer to hand. I will add headgear. Well, you've just triggered my trap card. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Lead yoke, man. He's a menace. All right, buddy. Game two. Game two. <laughs> the decision is yours. I'll go second again, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, I hate this hand so much. <laughs> I guess we'll just start with a duality. Okay, um, that changes things. No, wait, no, it doesn't. I will just take the spar. From here, let's go ahead and we're going to normal summon the glass jaw. I will set a card and I will pass it back. I'm assuming you're baiting me into an attack there. Why? And by the main, because you wouldn't put him out with no protection. Like the, the the pot of duality is nice just for like some added consistency, but if you do end up like pulling off the combo after you get the uh, the search from duality, you're kind of locked. So I'll start conservative. Okay. I'll do three and I'll pass. Okay. Uh, I will draw for turn. We'll go standby to the main phase. Let's just go straight to battle. And uh, let's see what this is. That will be a night assailant. Okay. Uh, this will die. We'll go to main phase two. Let's normal summon the switch hitter and activate the effect. Okay. Let's overlay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make the lead yoke. Being just chain. Ooh, you're going to target the lead yoke. Yeah, I, I guess that's uh, that'll do, pig. <laughs> I mean, mm. let's set a card then afterwards and we will pass it there. Yeah, stand by to main. All good. Unfortunately, uh, my hand is what they would call dog shit. Okay. So, Brick City, bitch. I'm going to set again. Okay. And I'm going to pass the turn. All right. I will draw. Stand by two main. Let's, well, I guess you're not really doing much. So, let's just set a card and I'll just pass it back. And by the main. All good. I guess I'll set another card. I guess I'll pass turn there. All right. I will draw. Stand by to main. Yeah, I'll, I'll just pass it back to you. Stand by to main. All good. Let's do a flip of night. Target your boxer. Uh, sure. So this will die. I will also do a flip summon uh, of adhesive explosive. Oops. Even though I don't get any value out of that. Uh, I will normal summon trust guardian. I'm going to overlay. Whoa. Or Shark Caesar. Let's solemn that. Damn. Okay. Okay. In that case, let's discard a card to special the tricky. Sure. We'll go battle. Yeah. And I will swing for two. I'll activate enemy controller to switch it to defense. I'll solemn your enemy. Whoa. Okay. I gotta go turbo here. Surprised you didn't just solemn my solemn. I could have, but this way you ended up taking more damage anyway yeah, at that rate let's um let's go main two yeah i gotta get rid of that i'll put the card in my hand on top of my deck okay to activate plague spreader sure and then i will synchro i'll do dark strike fighter 
Uh, so if you were to do this, this would do 14 damage, but you're probably not. You're just going to keep the body. Uh, that will be my turn. All right. I will draw. We'll go standby to me. Let's just normal summon switch hitter and activate the effect. We will grab the glass jaw. We're going to actually make heroic champion Excalibur and I will activate the effect. I will detach both materials and until your end phase, he will be double the original attack. So he will be at 4K. I will go battle and I will run this guy over. Main phase two, I got a back row. Back to you. Or wait a minute. Oh, I caught myself. I cheated. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I cheated. Uh, I I totally forgot the switch hitter actually locks me into battling boxers. Uh, uh okay. So we'll we'll take it back. Go ahead and get your guy back. I'll have it out like this. Um, we're still gonna overlay, of course. Uh, but we do end up having to make. Yeah, we're gonna make the lead yoke. Is it better to just go and attack to buff him immediately, or have you attempt? Don't forget to uh, gain your light points back too. Oh yeah, how many others? 14. As you can tell, this is my first time playing Battling Boxers. Otherwise, I would have just known that right away. Uh, I think I am just going to just pass it there. But during your so, standby phase, I do have something. Uh, I will activate Fiendish Chain on the Dark Strike ooh, Fighter. Ooh, boy, kill him. Okay, so I've already drawn main phase. Yeah. Yeah, that'll probably do it for me. Okay. I will draw standby to main. I'll go battle. I will yeah. attempt to swing and I will detach. I'll detach the glass jaw to protect him and then buff. And then that will activate the glass jaw. I will add the switch hitter to hand. I'll go main phase two and I will. You got to take the 400 damage. Oh, that's right. 400. And I will duality after. Oh, man. I <laughs> Maybe I should have duality first. <laughs> Um, yeah, hey, I, I saw that. I think I will end up just taking the snatch deal. And we'll shuffle, and I will just pass. Stand by to main. All good. When Cody, the irresistible force, meets lead yoke, the immovable object. So next turn, you're going to battle over me anyway, and I'll take 400 damage. You'd have to get something pretty serious to do uh, lethal, but you do have the switch hitter, which will let you do special summon back. Just for now, I think I'll activate MST. Let's go for Fiendish Chain. In response, I will Fiendish Chain <laughs> again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, that is not what I expected to be there, but... Unless that doesn't actually work like that, but um, because it's already negated, then I'll just do it on the resolution. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Either way, um, same concept. Yeah. Well, um, okay, I'm back to square one then, and I just wasted an MST. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, you didn't know if it was going to be a waste. Yeah, that's my turn. All right. I will draw. We'll go standby to main. Let's go ahead and normal summon the switch hitter and activate the effect. Mm -hmm. We'll get the glass jaw. Double make sure that I'm not doing anything improper here. You said it's not lethal. Well, I'm going to tell you right now it is. Uh, snatch steal. I'll take this to get it out of my way and <laughs> I will go to battle. I forgot you had snatch steal. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, and we're gonna go battle, and unless you got Fader. Nope. All right, battling boxers, let's go. I'm gonna tell you right now, this deck has nothing going for it except for lead yoke. Like the fact that this card is so sticky. It's annoying. Yeah. That 800 buff is ridiculously powerful. That's it's <laughs> too powerful, honestly. For <laughs> dead, getting it twice, that's way too powerful. Yeah, and the fact that it's not like, you know, buff itself for like the turn, it like, it's like just- 400 would have been enough. Yeah. Well, if you're curious what was in my hand. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm glad that I did what I did then. I didn't, I was not expecting to have to uh, play around Lava Golem. Oh, Assailant. What do you, what do you, what do you want from me? Warrior Lady me? actually deals with the um, the lead yoke. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Do you even know what my deck was supposed to do? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you were just turboing out fives with like these like no. stun cards, like Assailant and uh, That was adhesion. a side strategy, but that wasn't the deck's goal. Yeah, I have no idea what you were trying to do. Yeah, so the original goal of the deck was to banish everything and profit off of that. And the reason I'm playing tuners is because I have Angel of Zera. Oh, that's why you're trying to banish stuff. Okay. Not only do I have one, I have two of the fuckers. Damn, this was a secret. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought for sure, based on how the last game went, that you were definitely going to go first. And you caught me off guard. So, like, I ended up putting in cards in my deck for going second. Like, I put in the creature swap. I put in the night beam. I put in the uh, the fire form formation, Gyoko. Um, I even tried out a... Uh, I wanted to try this card out. was a Dark World Shackles. So Jeez, right, who's back? What, what a hodgepodge deck you have here. Yeah, so the idea behind this was that I have to maximize on the like the, the best of the battling boxers because we have quite a few of them, but like the ones that I'm playing are definitely the best ones. And some people actually don't really like Sparrow because it does lock you out of your battle phase. And it's one of those things too where like the way that they ruled it in tournaments was that you can't even go to battle phase and then main phase to activate Sparrow because I guess it just doesn't work that way. Because you've had a battle phase. Yeah, because of that, and you still want to play like some additional monsters just in case to like keep yourself defended. I wanted to play defensive monsters, so I put in the Snowman Eaters, I put in the Rikos, and I chose Rikos specifically over something like a Night Assailant just because one, I only have the one copy of Ryko, otherwise I would have probably just played more. But sometimes you can actually benefit from the mill because if you mill the Glass Jaw and like another Battling Boxer, you also get the, the add back to hand too. All right, buddy, here we are. We are back at the wheel. Go ahead, give you a nice juicy spin here. See what you get. Thanks, Cowpoke. Craft a extra deck monster. Wow. You can have a uh, another Zera. But uh, all right, let's give it a second spin. See what uh, I land on. Ultra Secret. So what was in here again? So we got like the Bujins. There's like the Key Beetle, Star Eater. I can make my own Zera. I don't think I actually pulled one on my own. Uh, what about my second option? A rare super okay that was i'm pretty sure this is exactly what i got the last time too so all right guys that's going to bring it into this episode thanks again for watching if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below as well go ahead hit the sub button if you haven't already help us reach our current goal of 100 subs as always we like to end with closing thoughts cody what are yours i would like to go to bed now <laughs> okay <laughs> no yeah the banner strategy still isn't exactly where it should be even with angel of zara here as a boss monster aside from like red maju for it but yeah maybe down the road maybe we'll get there yep however uh battling boxers uh i kind of wish they were more like rockham's locker robots where you just a uh, you know a quick little few taps and their uh their spine comes out of their body uh, i wish it were that easy i know that the archetype just got support a couple months ago with that terrible fire set that came out but um I feel like they really missed an opportunity there to make a battling boxer monster that is slightly resembling Hugh Jackman. Oh, that real steel movie? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that's it for us. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Our kicker sucks. <laughs> we had one of the best, most consistent kick kickers in the world, or in the, in the league, and then we traded him for a guy who can't make fucking field goals. I'll never understand it. Because we're not here to kick field goals. We're here to get touchdowns. Well, we ain't doing that either. <laughs> so... What's the dealio? I want to see like a team just completely resort to cheating. Well, the uh, 2009 or 2010 Saints got in trouble because their coach was playing them or paying them to intentionally hurt players. People forget about that.